mentality of ambassadors. I want to talk to us as people who are living here to go and take charge. I want to talk to us as people on assignment, on definite assignment. So it's a whole different setting tonight as I begin to speak to us as people who are going out there to take over the world. So it's an ambassadorial meeting today we are having. This is a diplomatic meeting. It's a meeting for diplomats. Am I communicating? It's a diplomatic meeting. We are here representing several constituencies. There are people that are representing the business sector. There are some that are representing the world of politics. There are some others who are representing the world of any form of industry. You are going to take over. But I want to talk to you with the mentality of you taking over in a Christian way. So, it's very important tonight that we open our hearts, our ears, our minds, our spirit. Because what makes a man is vision. What makes you a man is not your muscle, not your height, not your masculinity. It's vision. What makes you is your vision. Vision is the engine wheel, engine room of manhood. What makes you a man is your vision. So it's very important that we consider something today and then we'll pray and see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Luke chapter, sorry, Acts chapter 3 verse 4. I'm going to come to Luke. There's something I want to show us. Acts chapter 3 and verse 4. Acts 3, 4. Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. He gave heed to them expecting to receive something of them. Role models making impact. Role models making impact. So God is saying in this impact conference, God is raising a set of people who will live with a role model mentality, understanding that they are going there to take over. And I see you take it over. There is no door in this world that cannot be open. I want you to know there is no door that cannot be open. If doors are resistant to you, it's because you have not found the key. Any door resistant to you is because you've not found the key. Doors open by two dimensions, either by key or by kick. If it doesn't open by key, it will open by kick. There is a way to have doors open. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Every door in life has a key. A keyless door is a useless door. Any keyless door is a useless door. And I've discovered, have you found that, that most giant doors are opened by small keys? Most giant doors, there are certain kind of keys you have. For having the key at all, the door responds, even before applying it. For having the key, just showing the key to the door, the door opens up. You know it's not every car you have to put inside the key. Stand far away and press the button. The door knows you have the key. The consciousness of you having that key opens the door. This was a generation of believers. Christ had just released the Holy Ghost on them. And you must understand, I said to us, there are three levels. There is the feast of the Passover. When you come from darkness into light. When you come from the world into the church. is the first feast. And there is a second feast called the feast of the Pentecost. The feast of the Pentecost is what we saw in the book of Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Ghost came down and fell upon the disciples. And they began to speak with new tongues. But many people stop at that level. They stop at the level of the peace feast of pentecost there is a higher dimension and it's called the feast of the tabernacle that is what we saw in matthew 17 when jesus went up the mountain and elijah and moses came and tabernacled with him on that mountain and they began to show him what would happen ahead of time moses standing for the law elijah standing for the prophet when a man understands that dimension begins to traffic in the feast of tabernacle it is beyond speaking in tongues it is beyond praying for a miracle it's beyond praying for a testimony it's beyond praying for, for a, a turn around in life at that level you are having a romance with the holy ghost you are having an intercourse with scripture you are producing results and everything that cannot be denied if all 
all your service to God is for your children to grow up well or for you to have a baby all your service to God is for you to do well in business then you have all men most miserable there's a generation of people that God is raising up that their dream in life is to be intimate Paul said I am a Galilean I am a lawyer I am the topmost scribe that is not my pursuit my pursuit is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his suffering and be made conformable unto his death my prayer is not for a car my prayer is not for money my prayer is not for connection I am praying for intimacy with God to know God until I am known to be empty of myself and filled of God this was a generation where people were hungry for God and Peter saw that man by the gates of beautiful he said look on us we have come to a point when we know we are empty of ourselves we are filled with God am I speaking to somebody the mirror 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 the mirror the mirror is the worst gadget that reveals who you are the mirror is the worst gadget if you look at the mirror to check who you are then you are wrong the mirror only shows you what your container is what shows you your content is the word of God the mirror so even if you look at the mirror and you are limping that's not who you are even if you look at the mirror and you look poor that's not who you are the hidden man the hidden treasure he said we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us there is something inside of you there is something that you carry why we look not on the things which are seen for the things which we see are temporal but the things we don't see they are internal there is a glory that the eyes cannot see ears have no hair and it does not come to the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him let me tell somebody there is something inside me in this generation as a man can you comfortably tell the world to look on you when you are broke can you comfortably tell the world tell your generation tell your colleagues tell your contemporaries in business can you comfortably tell them like Peter look on me when you cannot pay your bills can you comfortably tell them look on me when your money is scattered here and there can you comfortably tell them look on me when you have issues in your health can you comfortably tell them look on me when you are owing the bank God wants to take us to a level where we can stand and tell the world look at me that you are looking for an example of who a child of God is look at me or are you looking for somebody who God has blessed look at me am I communicating let me give you a prophecy from Amos chapter 9 from verse 13 and I want the, the person that will say amen to that prophecy Amos 9 from 13 14 15 bring it in the message translation and see what the sovereign Lord says Amos 9 13 14 from the message translation hear this he said look at the prophecy of the word of god yes indeed it won't be long now god's decree hear what he says things are going to happen so fast that your head will swim he <laughs> said one thing fast on the heels of another you won't be able to keep up God is trying to tell you that testimonies will swallow you that you cannot count. Amen. He said, Amen. everything will be happening at once. Amen. Everywhere you look, blessing. Amen. Blessing like wine. Amen. Pouring up the mountains and the hills. Amen. Bring up verse 14. He said, Amen. I will make everything right again for my people. Amen. They will rebuild their ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and drink good wine. Amen. They will walk, will walk their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. Amen. Verse 15. Hear what the sovereign Lord says. Amen. I will plant them. God says, He will plant you. Amen. He said, Plant them on their own land. Amen. And they will never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. He said, God, your God, say so. 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 
Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. God, your God says so. Amen. You don't serve a dead man. You serve a mighty God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Somebody shout fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. Can we? That is what it takes. That you are a role model making impact. You can comfortably tell people, look at me. God is about to bring balance into your life. Every aspect of your life is about to receive balance. I say it's about to receive balance. It's about to receive balance. Look on us. Look on us. Hold on. Hold on. Peter was a man of influence. Peter, when Jesus left, Peter, 10 people followed him. Influence. God is raising up people in church, men of influence. Men who can make decisions. Men who can turn things around. Men of influence. When you see a church, a church being threatened over their land, they say they are about to evacuate a church. No, and there are men there no one has influence no one is able to put just one phone call and tell that person are you okay do you know this my church do you know i worship here god wants to take you to that point imagine as a pastor somebody is threatening your land and your member is a governor by hierarchy all lands belong to the state they can revoke your see of home am i correct you can just wake up on the wrong side of the bed and revoke it. No, nothing will happen. You take him to court. <laughs> Nigeria court. Five years you are in court. Five years you are in court. You'll be tired of court. Am I talking to somebody here? Influence! We have many prayer warriors. When Jesus died, his body was not given to prayer warriors. It was given to Joseph of Arimathea, a man of influence. Warriors, they're looking for the body, they stopped them. A man of influence went there and collected it. He said, Bring it, give it to me. Influence. Influence is needed in the church. People who have contact. People who have contact. A brother will be bundled from church and they will carry him, go and drop him in cell. Nobody can make call. Everybody in church is looking. Nobody can make call. Read the code. They went to a church and carried the pastor from the altar. And members are there, they are looking. There was one of my sons was telling me that they kidnapped, they kidnapped um, one of the people in his church. Sit down. And one of the brothers in the protocol heard it. He said, Wait, oh, they kidnapped somebody in this town. He said, Yes, that I'm in. So they said, okay. He told the pastor, daddy, don't worry. If he's here, they kidnap, except he's outside. If he's here, they carried this brother. He will come back before evening. The pastor didn't understand. It was not professional. <laughs> the boy went back. Before he became Christian, he was somewhere. <laughs> so he called the three major groups that he knew in Jai. He said, it's also a person with you. They said, no, ask this other group. They called. And they called that group. They, said, they told the group, ah! boss boss he said are you people okay that person is a member of my church return him so before evening the the guy was brought back and the pastor was talking yeah god really used you he said, we thank god sir we thank god sir when he told me i said pastor not be god use that more i was one who explained to him i said how was he before he became a guy ah, he said bad boy i said now you people you talk to now you people you talk to am i talking to somebody here yeah? was coming from somewhere so there are people god wants you to meet there are some people god wants you to meet are you following me one day i was in the plane i was in the plane 
and somebody was by me and he was very arrogant very arrogant very proud you know people are trying to tell him ah move, move so that somebody can pass into and get the seat he said for what for what people stood you stand up so somebody can go and sit down somewhere so i walked to him i politely said to him please sir the queue is long can you just please it won't take you anything so you are polite you are polite <laughs> inside a plane that he doesn't own <laughs> and they sat down so everybody was avoiding him so i now decided to sit by him i told the other people to take my seat i sat by him i said how are you say fine look at me say fine he said how are you what do you do i said i'm a pastor he said oh church people i said no pastor pastor he said okay hi i said what do i do now to embarrass this man i now saw him was holding a book he was reading he was reading and i saw he was marking the book he seemed to be interested so i bent my neck and i saw the author of the book he's my friend so i now brought a picture of me and that author took <laughs> and i said ah you like the book he said, ah, i prayed to meet him one day i said ah, he's my friend he's my friend <laughs> i just showed the picture he said, ah, ah, influence ah, ah. <laughs> you know him i said yes he said, he said how are you who are you who are you i mentioned my name he said who is suleiman the troublemaker <laughs> I said, am I a troublemaker? I said, ah, we know say, you, you not agree. You, not, you can't stand the church being ridiculed. I said, no, I'm just standing for the church. And at the end of the day, I made a mistake. I didn't ask for his card. I didn't ask who he was until we were about to come down. When I was coming down from the plane, he said, you didn't ask for my card. I said, oh, I'm sorry, give me. As he gave me his card and walked away, I said, he Abamio, what did I do? He was the CEO of a bank. And I have members who are looking for work. I have members who are looking for work. I said, I would have talked to this man with more respect now. I for not even show him that picture. Because person when they find help, not they do say no person. Are you what I'm talking about? So I'm like, oh! I have people looking. Influence. God wants to get us to that point. You will meet great men. Yeah. Take your seat. The Bible said, please, I'm learning the foundation. The Bible said there was a man who was paralyzed at the gate of where? He was by the gates of beautiful, the gate of power, the gate of signs, the gate of wonders. At the temple, we have miracles were happening. He was paralyzed. The temple, we have miracles where they saw the works of God and he was paralyzed. Every temple has its challenge. Every temple has its challenges. If you leave a church because there are issues, the next church you are entering, there will be issues. There will be issues. Every temple has its challenge. So there is no priest without infirmity. By the God of beautiful, every temple has its peculiarities. There are stories you hear and you are like, what? There are things, some stories I've heard. And I'm like, what? Every temple. A man saw a rich man and he was asking the rich man, he said, how do you people survive? How do you cope? He said, well, so you just have money. Just have money. As you have money, how do you sleep knowing that you have money? Are you normal? He said, Yeah. He said, You mean anything you want to buy now you can buy? So the man was looking at him. He said, What, 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 what makes you think that people who are, who are blessed financially don't have problems? He said, No, you don't have any problem. If I have your kind of money now. So the man said, Okay. The man now counted 200,000 and gave He said, Keep it for me, bring it next week. As he gave him the 200,000, the man was looking at the money. He has never seen that kind of money in his life. 200,000. He hasn't seen it before. He said, hey. So he now took the money into the house. Cash. As the money was in the house, he heard a noise at the gate. Go, go, go. He ran, carried the money and put it under the bed. So he heard something by the door. Blah, blah, blah. He carried the money from under the bed and raised the stove. And put the money under the stove. So he was sleeping at night. He had a noise on the ceiling. The first thing he opened his eye, he was looking for the money. Put the money under the pillow. While it was daybreak, he carried the money and went to the man. He said, I don't want to die. 
carry your money. The man said, okay. If 200,000 cannot make you sleep, imagine what I am going through. Imagine the pressures every day. There's no priest. There are people that you desire to be like. If you know their battles, you will thank God for the way you are. If you know what they are going through, you will say, God, I thank you. I thank you. If you know what they are up against, what they are, what they are compassed with, every temple has its peculiarities. Every temple has its challenges. To be role models, as we are going out of this place, back to our different churches, back to our different branches, the Bible says, Peter and John. Peter and John. Peter and John. To make impact, you must understand the power of unity. The power of unity. We have to be united. When you are a man in a church, in a location, anything, once it gets to your table, it is war. Once it gets to your table, it is battle. You are not a person that projects peace. That is why a man is in that place. Once you are there, you must make sure everything goes right. You must make sure your presence in that place reduces disputes. There are things that must not get... There's a man in our church. He will tell me, say, Papa, there are things that must not get to your table. Not when you are here. There are some things you must not hear about. We don't even want you to hear it. To resolve disputes. To resolve disputes. Power of unity. That's the problem we have. When men come to church, the problem these days, they bring their ego. They bring who they are. They bring their title. They bring everything to church. They try to tell the, remind the pastor. They try to remind the pastor. I remember a man came to, some years ago, a man came to the office. And he was looking at me. He said, hmm. As he walked in, he said, are you the apostle? He said, ah, wonderful. Wonderful. You look very young. Wonderful. You should be around. He was guessing my age. He came for prayer. This is somebody who came for help. Late 40s, thereabout. You can't be more than that. I was looking at him. I said, Me. He said, Yes. I said, Okay. He said, Okay. Wow, you are so young. Anyway, I need help. <laughs> I said, I can't help you. He was trying to guess to put a number. And I was looking at him. I was wondering, who needs help between me and, me and this man? Um, I was around 2015 or so. so. Anyway, I need help. He sat down. He said, they told me that you can help me. I said, no, I can't. He said, but hear me out first. I said, I already know. I've already heard you. I can't. Because this your approach is already a useless one. And no, I can't help you. And that is exactly what we have in church today. We have people who bring their masculinity into spirituality. The way they drag land in the village, they drag position in church. The way they drag title in the village, they drag position in church. When you remove them from office, now war. We made you men leader. Can't we remove you from being men leader? Did you bring men leader from house? We made you men leader. We now remove you. War. You now have a click. Say why they remove me. This your character is what we saw. That's why we remove you. This your attitude is what we saw. That's why we remove you. I remember a man was in my office and was arguing with a group of people. Years ago, Omega was about four years old. And what did he say? He said he heard a voice that he should marry a second wife. And we had an Edik in there that was shouting, It's a lie! It's a lie! You didn't hear any voice. And I said, Dick, calm down. Is it your voice? The man said he heard a voice. Leave him now. The man said, Papa, Papa, say I heard a voice. I said, Of course, you heard a voice. He said, You see, you see, I will follow you, Papa. I will always follow you. I said, No, you will soon leave me. Let me explain to you. You heard the voice. He said, yes, sir. I heard the voice. I said, it's true. And the voice said, you should marry a second wife. He said, yes. Yes. In fact, sir, I just want to let you know. I have done the wine carrying and everything. The voice said, I should marry. I said, yeah, it's true. Oh, that's it. Papa, what's true? He didn't hear a voice. I said, he heard the voice. The voice of the devil. <laughs> Is it not a voice? Is the voice of the devil not a voice? I said, hear the voice of the devil. He said, ah. I said, not in this church. Oh. No, it won't happen. Marry second wife, it cannot happen. Because one of those holding a sensitive position, I said, you will drop it. Eh? She said, I will leave. I said, ah, that's why we have doors. 
That's why we have door. So one go, you go. You want come, you come. I said, you, on this no, you cannot do this to this woman. He got angry. Now, two weeks after that, he sent me a message that all is tight. Since he became a member, we should calculate it. Before that time, we used to have envelope. You drop tight, we record it. That's part of the reason we, we don't have tight card now. We don't know how much you gave, so you cannot you can't sue anybody. There's no tight card. There's no evidence. There's no record. You gave to the Lord. You want your tight back? Go to the Lord. <laughs> From that day, I abolished tight card. I told them, Papa, many ministries have tight card. I said, we don't have. Tight card, abolish. Abolish. The man, the, he said the one, and people said, no. Some of our sons who are lawyers says, Papa, we can fight this. I say, I don't like, when you, I don't like fighting Christians. Calculate the tight, let's pay him. Eh? We calculated that period the tight emptied our account because we have in project the tight cleared i said for transparency say give it back to him they gave it back to him and i felt something when they gave him back to him as that was what was done to him a covering was lifted he was going to nature at the bridge he had an accident before they rushed him he was the only one that died only the covering was lifted God said, no problem. Take your tithe. Give me my life. That thing was lifted from him. Because he brought that arrogance to church. When you cannot be broken. You cannot be broken. You cannot take counsel. You enter into a system. It is trouble. You enter into a department. It is war. You are holding meetings against your pastor. Your pastor talk. You talk. What, 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 is he? what does he know? What does he have? When he finishes ministry, you gather a clique. A young boy. What does he know? Is it because in this ministry you 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 act as if your pastor is privileged to pastor you? You act as if, and that's the problem we are having. That's the problem we are having. And a lot of men, what God God brought them for? Why God brought them into a commission? They have missed it. Why God brought them into that system? They have missed it. Why God brought them? God know their foundation. God know where they are coming from. God know what is fighting them. God brought them to the ark. The ark of safety. Brought them for preservation. Brought them to keep them for protection. We must pursue unity. We have one voice. We must pursue unity. We must be united. There is power in unity. I may not like what you say. You may not like what I say. But when it comes to the house of God, we are pursuing one goal. We must pursue unity. We must get to that point today as believers, as men. We cannot be in church and things are upside down. How can you be in a church? There is quarrel. You don't take it as a burden. There is problem in the youth, problem with the women, problem with the choir, problem with the usher. I am a man. I will reconcile everybody. If I have to hold meetings, I will make sure there is peace. I cannot be in this church and everywhere is scattered. I will reconcile. Pastor, do I have your permission? All the church or church or church has to stop. I want to address everybody. That's why God brought me here. Not everybody is a pastor. Not everybody is a preacher. Not everybody is an evangelist. But there are people who has given the gift of administration. That they can be in a place and they'll make sure things are working. They'll be in a place and make sure things are okay. One of the reasons I succeed today is because I let everybody do their job. I let everybody do their job. I let everybody do their job. In this ministry, everybody has freedom. To do their job and i've told our pastors in this place everybody who pastors a branch is almost like the general overseer of that branch because i do not talk i don't see anything i don't interfere that's why if a pastor leaves omega it can't be better than those he left except it was better than them before he left you don't get the english except it was better than them before he left if it wasn't better than them before he left, it can't be better because the only thing that will change is somebody is the same thing I don't bother so that people can fulfill their vision inside this vision even though most of them even though most of them have abused the privilege and misuse it and embarrass themselves but I give you that freedom unity no bird can fly with one wing no bird flies with one wing you need both wings unity unity the church has to begin to pursue unity an attack on one is an attack on all 
you attack my brother all of us will come out after you when a church loves themselves that alone is an evangelism when a church stands for each other one person has a little challenge imagine a brother is going to court somebody took him to court and that day they saw over 25 men appear with him in court they say what is going on this one pack up boom this one brought his car boom that one what's going on yeah it's today not your court today we are here for you now we are standing his friends his friends say what's going on he said these are my church members say why are they here they came to identify with me eh? 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 when is your service <laughs> everyone likes to be sure that they have a family but when people are going through challenges we leave them on their own we leave them on their own when people are going through pains we leave them on their own our strength is in our unity our strength is in our unity look on us he said looked on them expecting to receive role models making impact role models are men of content content look on us expecting to receive there is something i carry you cannot live here and be empty that that gifting and that talent in you that has not been harnessed by the power of the holy ghost it shall manifest there is something inside you that the world will see there is a glory inside you that the world will see <laughs> somebody say i carry something i carry something say i carry something i carry something take your seat how can you do business empty that business you are doing there are people doing the same business if you know the price they are paying you can't move about empty assuming you are loaded you are assuming don't assume be sure know that you are loaded know that you are solid there are spiritual principles that you obey you wake up in the morning after praying for 10 20 minutes or an hour you enter wonders without number you fellowship with god you pray in tongues after that you take time read your bible after that you drop an offering all those are acts of loadedness those are acts of being loaded by the time you come out you are ready to conquer the world you are ready to conquer the world most politicians you see today are the most fearful people in this world they are the most fearful but they have people backing them they'll go and ask should i travel should i travel should i go here should i do this should i do that should i do that but we have people in church who are empty-hearted empty-hearted empty because the problem with the church with the church the problem with the church is in the church when the church begins to fight itself there's no body no religion so the church is a relationship no religion classifically speaking the christianity see as a religion in general terms no religion has helped humanity like christianity no no there's a religion today that most people adopt not that the religion is a religion of war but some people hide under the canopy of that religion to perpetrate war they hide under the canopy to kill yet you will hear somebody speak against them because they know if you open your mouth and speak against them you won't cross that gate they will cut off your head but yet what is worse than killing you are saying christianity oh people they are collecting money what is worse than killing but you will not hear somebody open his mouth when you attack one of their own they know he's wrong they say leave him for us leave him for us they come out in a group but if you attack a pastor those who don't go to his church will join him, join you to attack him it's a shame and a disgrace it's a shame and a disgrace we need to get to that point to become a voice am i talking to somebody here somebody say i am not empty i can't hear you i can't hear you i carry something there is something inside of me peter says such that i have you will get to that point where you say such as i have because god is about to get you loaded with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places god is about to get you loaded with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places am i talking to somebody here yeah. they went to the hour of prayer the role model making impact are men of prayer men of prayer the man of impact is a man that prays he said you know how can somebody just wake up and just walk out of his house without praying where do you have hope is there something else you put your hope you didn't pray you didn't talk to god you just walk out of the house and you are where are you going 
You wake up and the first thing you do is to carry your phone. You have not spoken to God. Never touch your phone in the morning if you have not prayed. Can you take that discipline out of this conference? Can you take that discipline out of this conference? Somebody say, ah, I've been calling you. You didn't pick my call. Say, I have not prayed. You see, when God knows you have that sense of devotion, that sense of mentality, that is what they call sacrifice. That sense of mentality that if I have not prayed, I can't talk to you. Why didn't you pick my call? Say, ah, that was early. I have not prayed now. It's after prayer I, I pick my phone. When God knows you, give him that regard. A covenant is established. When God knows you, give him that regard. Why does God tell people to pay tight? He doesn't need your money. How many of you know God is not broke? No, now. God does not need your money. What does tight mean? Tight is a proof of discipline. There are seven things God teaches you by tight. First is discipline. The ability to remove 10% consistently proves discipline. That's what God is establishing. Discipline. The second is loyalty. Is imbibing that spirit of loyalty. That's what God is doing. The thought is trust. I trust him. I trust him. And that is where people do not understand. God does not need your money. God says, cattle on a thousand, he belongs to him. If God wants to eat cattle, he doesn't need you. He created the cattle. A cattle on a thousand, he belongs to God. If God is hungry, he won't ask you for cattle. He will command all the cows to lay their life, roast themselves, boil themselves, appear on the plate. Appear on the plate. But God does not eat that. It's an opportunity for you. The act of prayer. I decree as you hear the sound of my voice. The baptism of prayer fall upon your life <laughs> prayer is your spiritual respiration prayer is your spiritual respiration when you breathe in prayer you breathe out power as oxygen is to man so as oxygen is to the physical man so prayer is to the spiritual man prayer is your spiritual oxygen your spiritual respiration prayer <laughs> prayer your attitude to prayer becomes your attitude in life your attitude to prayer becomes your attitude in life prayer and faith are the two raw materials for miracles prayer and faith are the two raw materials for miracles in psalm 65 and verse 2 thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall not flesh come thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall not flesh come you must get to that point psalm 4 verse 1 hear me when i call oh god my righteousness there is power in prayer. Luke 11, 1. He said to them, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. Luke 18, 1. He speak a parable unto this end saying, man ought to pray and not to faint. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call on me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. God want us to pray. The spirit of prayer. Men of impact are men that prays. There is a way a man can pray and his eyes will be open to see what is happening in his family. There's a way a man can pray and he can arrest ahead of time what the enemy is planning. How can the man go to bed? Him go to bed. The wife go to bed. The children go to bed 9 a.m. And he wake up the same time with the whole family. Who is the father of the house? You wake up the same time your wife wakes up. The same time your children wake up. Sometimes 1 a.m., 2 a.m., when I turn to my wife, she says, Go and sleep, this man. You know they sleep. I say, How can you be sleeping? I'm sleeping. Who is the man? You sleep. You sleep. She's here. You sleep. 99% of the time. Not 95. Not 90. 99. I'm awake. Once it gets to 1 a.m., bam! My eyes shining like torchlight. When I pray and pray, I pray, study, study, study. I look at time, it's four o'clock. Between four and five, I have nothing doing. I'll go and disturb her. I hold her leg. Wake up, wake up, wake up. He said, you, you let somebody rest. I said, why will I? I've woken up. You people are still sleeping. Wake up, wake up. 
wake up everybody wake up wake up and say don't you sleep i say i can't be sleeping when you are sleeping it's a shame you you your wife wakes up before you it's a shame and you're even proud of it <laughs> that's why i love my wife she's very prayerful it's it, 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 it's a shame that your wife is more spiritual than you is a shame why are you a man <laughs> Who is the man your wife will come and tell you i saw something last night eh, tell me i saw something eh, tell me see my husband don't go out there's something i saw last night eh, tell me are you not ashamed won't you won't you say this god that is talking to you he didn't travel i, I must seek his face how can my wife be giving me revelation who is the husband of the house anything my wife wants to tell me should be a confirmation of what god has already told me don't be like samson's father that that god visited the husband the, the wife before the husband See, when I saw something that Samson had problem, I didn't blame him. He started from foundation. Yes, sir. A man that angel visited the mother before the father. Have you seen that outside an arrangement? Before the angel of God went to Elizabeth, he first went to Zechariah. Yes, but for Samson, he visited Manoah's wife before Manoah. He told the woman, "See, you shall have a child." He said, ah, "My husband is not here." He said, "That useless man. Where did he go? He's not around." He said, "Okay, okay, okay." And the woman said. To the husband, this is what I've seen. Ah! He said, No wonder the angel they come to you first. This your attitude is already bad. He said, Okay, let the angel come back. The Bible says, Oh my god, that woman had a fellowship with God. He said, When when that angel came and said the husband, when the end they made a sacrifice, as the angel was going, the angel was making spots, angel was dancing, angel was playing, angel was dancing, angel was playing, and there are many men like that. Who God will bypass and go and visit their wives. God bypassed them. They have become like Eli. God has bypassed them because there's no devotion to God. Say, Papa, you don't understand. I, 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 when I walk, 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 I'm tired. I'm tired. If somebody is tired. The person is tired now. Somebody have to rest. Let my wife be praying the prayer. Let me be bringing the money. I'm tired. A man can be salmon proof, but no one is prayer proof. A man can be advice proof. No one. There's nobody you cannot penetrate with prayer. Nobody is prayer proof. Be it a president, be it a captain of industry, you can penetrate them by prayer. You're about to go for that proposal. Take out two, three days. Don't go empty hearted. Take out two, three days to seek the face of God. Seek the Lord. When you seek the Lord, you find favor before men. Seek the Lord in the place of prayer. Peter and John, they said the hour of prayer be the ninth hour. The hour of prayer be the ninth hour. N-I-N-T-H, nine. Figure nine. The hour of prayer being the ninth hour. The number nine is for fruitfulness. The hour of prayer being the hour of fruitfulness. The hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Anytime a man makes up his mind to pray, that man has opened up himself to be fruitful. I make it decree. Anything that is fighting your prayer life, it shall be swallowed up today. Take your seat. A man called Charles Finney, a great revivalist. He said, Revival fall. When brother Amen meets sister wet eyes. When brother Amen meets sister wet eyes, the revival fall. When the man prays and the woman is intercessory, revival fall. You want to see a church on fire? You want to see a church that is burning 24 hours, like the headquarters here? Headquarters is a place of fire. If you have been camping around this place for the past few days, you will notice a difference. It's a place of, anywhere you turn, people are praying. Anywhere you turn to, people are praying. Am I communicating? Everywhere people are praying. A man said, a man said he came to have a quiet time in this church and he regretted it. He said, There's no quiet time in this your church. He said, I regretted it. He said, Because at night I came to study. From one corner in the bush, I will hear. I carry my chair, I move somewhere else, I will hear. I say I should go here. He said, I just carry my key, I enter the room. I say, I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody cannot. I said, No, this place is on fire. Because, like priests, like people. Apostle Suleiman is your father and you are cold. How? No. Because he, he, every fiber of my being wants to pray. Every been once to pray 
am i talking to so every five of my being wants to study my wife sometimes will look at the bed and say my husband i thought i'm your wife i say yes he said ah, move your other wives to one corner what is there a bible a jota another bible up to like seven lined up i say hey, don't touch it touch not my anointing and do my prophet know how leave all this my bible don't touch don't touch it don't touch it don't touch it don't leave it leave it leave it i sleep i wake up with it i have no other life i have one life to live i have to maximize it how what is the legacy you are what have your children learned from you what prayer life have they seen in you listen to me children learn more from pictures if you are not if your children are not on fire don't blame their mother blame yourself What prayer cannot do nothing can do if prayer cannot change it nothing can change it what prayer cannot do nothing can do i'm a proof and i can tell you that god answers prayer i can tell you that god answers prayer i can tell you that god answers prayer one time i was in a certain country it was time to go to the airport i was praying 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 and they said you have two hours here to the airport about one hour before you now Get your body pass and the rest. I said, no problem, no problem. I was still praying and pray. they were knocking. After a while, sa 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 time time. I want to go out. I wasn't released. I want to go out. I wasn't released. I continued praying. The next day, sir. Oh, we we'll miss this thing. It got to a point they were not bothering me again. In other words, you have missed the flight. So no need. Just pray. Go and pray. No need. After a while, I said, let's go to the airport. To do what? So you missed the flight. I said, we'll get the next flight. As we got there, we we're told that the flight was delayed. That we didn't miss the flight. I said, thank God. I was about getting the body part. They said, wait, you can't get there's an issue here. We saw them handcuff a young man like this. He wore this jalabia. They handcuffed him. And he was going. They bent his neck. They said, we can't use that plane. They said, as they assembled, people were going to the plane. They discovered that the, the plane gave a signal. And they disembodied, disembarked everybody, disbodied everybody, and began to check their bags and found in this bag a little metal. When they checked wires, it was a bomb. And that thing would have exploded as soon as the plane takes off. So they said, Everybody come down. So people came down and they held him, brought it down quietly. Why was God holding me back? He was arresting that issue. Why was he holding me back in the place of prayer? Listen. We don't pray till we are tired. We pray till we have peace. It's not about praying for 10 hours. You can pray for 10 hours until you have peace. You don't pray till you are tired. You pray till you have peace. When you pray to that point, you now feel peace. Then you have hit something in the spirit realm. If we had come out that period, maybe probably I will not be here today. So you must get to that point in the place of prayer where you buy into the mind of God. You buy men of impact and men of prayer. I ask heaven to open up on you a passion, a hunger, a baptism, a desire to pray. From now, the more you pray, the more you want to pray. Amen. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Amen. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Amen. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Amen. The man of prayer. The man of prayer survives the lion's den. What kept Daniel in the lion's den? That lion became his massaging pillow. The lion became a spa. The lion then became a massaging pillow. God changed the appetite of the lion when they saw Daniel. God changed their appetite. The appetite for human flesh in them died when they saw Daniel. Why? Daniel came in the wings of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And lions don't eat lions. When they saw Daniel, they were not seeing a human being. They were seeing a lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah overwhelmed him. Because he was a man of prayer. The Bible says when they said nobody should pray. Daniel said not me. Daniel knew that I must pray. You know the instruction they gave was that nobody should pray for one month. To give that instruction today, people will be quiet and say no problem. Is it not one month? wisdom 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 <laughs> you need wisdom it's not just one month after one month all the fasting all the prayer daniel knew that it was a relationship it's already part of him he can't stay one week without prayer makes one week 
One month without prayer makes one mourn. And one year without prayer makes one year, yeah. <laughs> so he knew that he can't stay without prayer. And Daniel began to pray. The Bible said when he prayed, he faced Jerusalem because that was where the decree was made. He began to supply. When you arrest the seat of demonic oppressions, you saw her in abundant victory. Yay! The baptism of prayer is falling upon someone today. Yeah. When last did you as a man have a retreat? Say, I'm having a retreat. I'm seeking God. I'm seeking the face of God. I'm seeking the face of God. I'm seeking the face. You don't know that they immediately they give you a position in church. Your spiritual level should boost up. There are some titles and offices you should not collect if you're not spiritually ready. They made you men leader. It means you are the one carrying all the men. You have to be on fire. You have to be on fire. A men leader, you are still struggling with alcohol. No now. You have to be on fire. It means you are a pace setter. You are a role model. A toe stander. Not a down sitter. A front liner, not a back bencher. As soon as that office comes, God entrusts you with it. Your spiritual life has to be on fire. Your spiritual life. You have to be a leader in church that people can say, he prayed for me. I saw a change. He prayed for me. Yeah, there were issues we were having. And then I just spoke to our men. Our men leader organized a fasting. And he prayed. We prayed. And something happened. That's the kind of leadership we want to have. Spiritual leadership. Am I talking to somebody? We are not a traditional council. That we gave you office because we want only your counsel. We want also your spirituality. What is your impute? How is your being around help the church? When I see men who came, who came to this church, you know, when people come to this church, they, they, most of them who came from other churches come very proud. I don't talk. Oh, I don't talk. They'll come very proud. After two, three years, the kind of humility. Ah, no. In this church, I remember, I don't know if she, the woman is, is here now, one of our top women, when we started. Apostle, I want to counsel you. I said, counsel me, ma. She counseled me. <laughs> Every time I give this illustration, she was say, ah, daddy. He said, I want to counsel you. I said, counsel me, ma. But today, humility has come. As we get closer to him in the place of prayer, he brings us in humility. Many came. I know many who were heads of department in school. When they came to this church, they thought it was an institution. They brought their head of department mentality from the polytechnic. Brought it to church, trying to correct what should be corrected. I said, no problem. When the word of God enters you, today they are humble. Today they are following God. I see them praying in tongues, blasting in tongues, see them speaking in tongues, having retreats. My heart indicted the good matter. Because he has made my mouth the pen of a ready writer. When I see that happen, because you cannot be a man of prayer and not be broken. He break you. Not by will. Do you know Jesus? was struggling with that will but when he went into prayer prayer broke him and he said not my will but thy will be done anytime certain characters are manifesting in your life and you look at them and say this is not of God it's time for a retreat it's time for a retreat it's time for a retreat anytime certain attitudes begin to show up in your life no it's time to seek the face of God turn off your phone Go to a solitary place. It's time to pray. This character is not of God. This attitude and attribute is not of God. How many people are believing God for that fire of prayer? Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Hallelujah. Be on your feet. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come, oh, I am your own. You are my. Own. You are my standard 
Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am Lord. You are my melody. Yes, Lord. You are my standard. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am Lord. You are my everything. You are my standard. Till the day. I am your Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, people, everybody, listen. Hear me before we pray. The Corinthian church, the Bible said they came backward in no gift. They are the fullness of the gifts of the Spirit. As a church, as a ministry, as a body, when there is a brother in our midst who is going through financial problems, marital problems, family battles, it means there's something deficient in our lives. We should be able to come to the church where everyone, as soon as they get into that presence, they are overwhelmed. Their battles are swallowed. Their mountains are brought low. Their valley is exalted. The Lord told me what is called a full church of power. Where you get to a point, you are asking for anyone with problem. No one. No one. See, who has a, who has a challenge here? No one. A man called Pastor Benny Hinn he lives in California. Now. He lived in California before he moved to Florida now. Pastor Benny Hinn. He went to a church pastored by a, a man called Charles, Charles and Francis Hunter. And after he ministered, Benny is a healing evangelist. He said, I want to pray for the sick. And the pastor whispered to him, No sick person here. But the pastor is a healing evangelist. If you are sick, he will, he will face you until that sickness leaves. He will face you. One day I looked at one of my son and my daughter. Where is, he? Where is Joy? I look at Sylvester's wife. Where, where is Joy? Okay. I look at him one day and I was just angry. I said, I want to see you and your, you and your wife. I said, I will lay hands on you until you get pregnant. How many years are you married? Eh? Six. I said, I will learn so you ought to get pregnant. This one, yes, is number two. That child is number two. It's the second one. Mm. I said, no. The devil can mock you. Am I talking to somebody here? The prophetic word. Okay, where's Sam? Where's Sam? How many years are you married? Four. Four. Huh? Before the children came. He said, before the children start coming. Four years. A word hit him. When I see people around the church who have problems, I won't let you rest. I will harass you. If you are comfortable with your problem, me, I'm not comfortable. I told the man, I said, be bringing your head every service. He said, eh? I said, as they close, bring your head. Anytime they close, bring that head. He said, what? I said, I will see me, the God who called me, and that's your uncle who is stronger. I said, if, I said, if he doesn't die in the next one month, God didn't call me. After every service, bring your head. Bring it. We are learning something. Kill the strong man. Kill the strong man. Kill the strong man. Kill the strong man. I said, This is your fight. It's our fight. I said, Once you enter this ministry, we inherit your battle. Your fight becomes our fight. Kill the strong man. One night, some mini was calling, calling, calling. I said, You know, I don't take call. Papa, it don't happen. It don't happen. At the go village. I said, Okay. You don't have to the go village. Now you want bury him? Stay back. Now you want bury him? Stay back. You are not going anywhere. They said the man don't die. I want go laugh. Her. Ooh, I want go laugh. Her. Ooh, as you see him, the man don't die. Your mumu never die. Stay back. You are not going anywhere. I said you are not going anywhere. Leave him. Since he refused to go to heaven, God has sent him to hell. Since the gospel is there to take people to heaven some said they will never change then they are free to go to hell am i communicating this prayer i'm going to pray now eh listen to this prayer is for us are you listening that anyone this is our midst who a strong man is fighting so it's not you didn't hear the prayer it's for what for us and for those who couldn't come who are at home watching by television anyone in our midst 
who is being haunted by a strong man they fought your father they fought your brothers now they are fighting you fighting your children hear the prayer hear the prayer let the ground open and swallow them amen are you ready say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus I can't hear you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every strong man. Every strong, strong man. man. Contending our life. Contending our life. As we pray. As, as we pray. pray. Let the ground open. Let the ground open. And swallow you. And swallow you. And swallow you. And swallow you. And swallow you.